Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, this week I'll be reviewing Married at First Sight season 12, episode 16. Um, this is the last week uh, before the, the couples have to make their final decisions on decision day. Um, so in this episode I'll start off with uh, Ryan and Clara. Um, Ryan and Clara, I know a lot of people have concerns. I think they're going along very well. Um, I think um, this week it was better because they didn't, although Ryan brought it up with his friend, they didn't sort of go too much into the conversation about the sex and their love you. Um, I know they still have problems in their communication style, which is which is bound to happen because you can't expect to understand and know everything about someone in four weeks. Um, so Ryan met up with his friend, had a chat with his friend about his decision, um, was very truthful about his decision, although he didn't bring up the issue about the I love you well, they didn't show it, or the issue about the sex. And I think what I see in Ryan is, Ryan I think is someone who's always, maybe it's because of his job or anything, I don't remember what he does for a living, but he looks like he's someone who's always sort of strategizing and sort of managing crisis before they arise so he wants to know what's happening you know where do they stand in their relationship what are their plans what are their goals whereas clara is someone who just goes by the seat of flies by the seat of her pants she just does what she wants when she wants to and i think this is where they complement each other and will be able to help each other because clara will be able to help ryan loosen up and ryan will, will be able to sort of help clara sort of harness you know her her, for lack of a better word, dysfunction and sort of get some sort of direction towards where she's heading. Um, I found this, this conversation with this friend very insightful because they did have an honest and a frank conversation and this friend, I think people have different ways of communication and some people are very, you know, expressive with their how they feel, which it seems that's how Clara is, where some people are very reserved, which seems that's who Ryan is. And I think it's a matter of them continuing to talk, continuing to work on their relationship, and hopefully they'll be fine. Um, For Clara, Clara, I think, is so head over heels in love with Ryan that she's decided to ignore any red flags or any concerns that she might have. Because when she had a conversation with her friend, she didn't say anything about the issues they were having. And the producers are a bit shady because they showed, you know, her complaining about the sex and her complaining about the fact that he hasn't told anyone that I love you. And I think it's important for her to be honest with herself in order for them to progress. But I think because she's so desperate for this relationship to work, she's decided to sort of um, silence all her concerns and sort of just paint a positive picture about her marriage and just hope that everything will be okay. And the fact that she scored her marriage 10 out of 10 reminded me of Danielle and Bobby because I remember on Happily Ever After, they were asked by Ashley, so how would you rate your marriage? They were asked as a group, you know, how would you rate your marriage? And they said 10 out of 10. And the experts told them, you can never rate your marriage 10 out of 10 because you're still growing. You, you still need room for growth and room for development. So I think with Ryan and Clara, it's just continued work. Um, I think they're doing very well. Outside of those two issues that they have, I think they're doing very well. Their communication toward, you know, they're very supportive. They're very affectionate with each other. They are very, um, you know, it shows they care because they take the time to listen to each other and they take the time to do what the, what even what they're not comfortable with they take time to do it just because they know their partner wants to do it and even when they went to play to 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 play you know football football um you could tell clara was struggling and in a different scenario i think with vincent vincent would have kicked off but she just stood there and just you know let her, her 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 other half enjoy himself and when they finished they had to sit down and the chat obviously they still ryan is still trying to analyze the the his decision and i think this is what is frustrating for clara because she's trying to celebrate their accomplishments whereas ryan is trying to sort of um see how he can manage the con the issues that are there to make sure that this is definitely what he wants um and i loved of all the couples when he left when they left for him to go and spend the night at his own place 
he's the only couple person we saw sort of take time to say goodbye to his partner even though clara was still asleep in bed he gave her a kiss and i think ryan and clara are going to be fine i know a lot of people are advocating that she should leave him i don't think so i think she should stay and i think they should continue to work on their marriage and they'll be fine um then we move on to brianna and vincent brianna and vincent i said this last week and i'm going to replace it there are some concerns this week at least we saw some of them bubble up but there are some concerns that are there but they've sort of tried to sort of just um sh cover them up and just sort of say everything is fine they've sort of taken clara's way of thinking whereby they focus on the positive and ignore the negative and just to hope it goes away and so this is why you find when they had a conversation and um uh, Vincent actually told um, Brianna that when I spoke to the experts, this is what I said I didn't want. I didn't want someone who was bossy, and they gave me someone who's bossy. And I think a lot of a lot of viewers are having issues with Vincent saying that, oh, he's not, he's not, you know, he can't handle a strong. I don't think it's the fact that she's a confident woman or she's very assertive. I think it's the way in which she communicates that's the issue for them it's not the fact that i don't think he's bothered by the fact that you know she's an accomplished person she's someone who's assertive she's someone who's got a sense of direction and knows what she wants i think his concern and what is not articulating properly is the fact that he's concerned about the way she um comes across or the way she expresses herself when she's trying to get a point across because this is why some of her jokes don't land because they come across as harsh when that's not her goal her goal is just to make sure that he understands her and so i think just like with any other couple that has been on marriage at first sight they need to work on their communication he needs to vincent needs to learn to explain to brianna his concern what is he concerned about he needs to tell her in a way that she's able to understand what it means because by him saying oh you're bossy take the bossy word away what do you mean by bossy is it you don't want someone who's constantly pushing you i thought he said initially he said you wanted someone who was supportive of his ambition well she is a, she is supportive but is he saying the way she's up or the how she communicates her support is the issue and i think some of it was just being done for the drama so that you know it's not a foregone conclusion that uh, they're going to stay married i think vincent and brianna are going to stay married they love each other they have a few issues just like with everybody else but i think with time they'll work on them and they'll be fine they they don't have as bad an issue as other couples but they still do have issues these are people that are still getting to know each other brianna spoke to her mom um I found her mom to be very supportive and her mom to be very... What I've always loved about Brianna's mother is that she's very honest with her daughter. She doesn't mince her words and she's very honest in her opinions. And she's always giving her constructive feedback so that it allows Brianna to sort of reflect on her actions and sort of come up with a plan. I think the the, the producers somehow edited the mother's words when she said, well, if, you know, if he doesn't like it, then that's to end it. I think she might have been trying to tell her daughter then, if you love him and he doesn't like the way you're talking to him, maybe it's worth you looking at how you're coming across and seeing if there's a way you can work on your communication style. And if that's what she meant, then that's fine. It's a totally different scenario when you see Brianna talk to her mother as compared to how Haley and her mother were talking. You can see that the mother is trying to sort of build her daughter, whereas... um. Haley's mother was just defending her daughter and didn't care to get the full details of exactly what happened. Um, Vincent met up with his friend, had a conversation with his friend, also expressed his concerns to his friend about, you know, the fact that, you know, she does come across as bossy and so he finds it difficult. And I think the one thing they're going to have to work on is they're going to have to work on um, the thing that Clara and Ryan have that Brianna and Vincent don't have is the fact that where Ryan is very structured, Clara is very dysfunctional. So they sort of complement each other in that way that they try, they can sort of somehow blend and sort of become a, a very, very highly functioning unit. Whereas 
Brianna and Vincent seem to be more alike on a lot of things. And because they are so in love, they seem to be covering up and not actually dissecting. Because in all this time that they've met with the experts, they could have gained a lot from the experts had they been very honest with what was going on. So I hope after decision day, they do take time to go to couples counseling and maybe understand learn how to talk to each other and there won't be as many issues i don't think vincent is someone who's not i don't think he's weak i don't think he's someone who's afraid of people's opinions i think he's just someone who's got a different way of communicating and as he said when people you know behave a certain way he tends to shut down so i hopefully you know brianna sees you know that this is the man she wants and she works on her communication style you, he can't stop her being assertive. This is who she is. This is what her mother said. I think it's just a way of if she says something he doesn't like, then he needs to pull her on it. And with time, hopefully she'll learn how to sort of um, say what she wants to say without offending her husband. Next, we move on to um, Eric and Virginia. Eric and Virginia, I'm really struggling with I think Eric and Virginia, they have a lot of issues. There is the alcohol issue. There is the issue of their communication style. And the fact that I think Virginia's immaturity is another concerning fact about them. Um, Eric did speak to his friend. I think Eric is now all into this marriage and they really want it to work. But the problem is, as they were show, the producers showed the highlights, there's still the concern about the fact that at times he gives these ultimatums and his communication can be misinterpreted as controlling. And so I think this is where the concerns are because he is looking past decision day. He's happy with the fact that he was merged with Virginia and he wants their marriage to work and, you know, he's making plans for after the, the after decision day. And I think the fact that they can't seem to agree on their pets and they can't seem to agree on their accommodation. That's going to be an issue. I've always said this, that Virginia needs um, counseling to find out why she's so dependent on alcohol uh, to address her issues with alcohol per se. And also they need counseling as a unit in order for them to be able to communicate with each other and move forward. And um, his friend seemed, Eric's friend seemed to understand where he was coming from and gave him some sound advice. Um, Virginia's friends, I found it concerning that her male friend is the one that came to the house and she, she then phoned her video conference called her, 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 her female friend. I think given the fact that her husband is very uncomfortable with her relationship with these guys, I think she should have spoken to the girls. And even when they were speaking, you could actually hear that the girl was giving more constructive feedback than the guy. And so... I really don't know what their plan is. And the other thing is, it seems like Virginia is self-sabotaging her, her marriage because she, she said initially that, you know, because of her parents divorcing, she had issues with abandonment. And I think because they're getting towards decision day, she's worried that Eric will turn around and say no. And so to protect herself, she's trying to make sure that she does, she's, she, you know, if he says no, then it doesn't affect her in any way. Because some of the things that she says, are hurtful and even when eric was pouring his heart out to her and he was crying she didn't seem moved by it and it's just like do you really like this man or love this man as you say or are you just going through the motions until decision day i think they will stay married past decision day but a lot of things are going to have to change or there's going to be a lot of sort of um compromise on both parts before they they can work as a unit they're not as dysfunctional as jamie and uh, elizabeth and beth but they are dysfunctional in their own way and as dr pepper told them you need to stop having big conversations while you're intoxicated and i think they need to really work on that hopefully they'll be fine um the last couple is Haley and jacob personally i don't see why Haley and jacob are still appearing on the screen i think Haley and jacob should have stopped appearing on the screen the minute they started fighting and realized that this wasn't going to work, I think the producers have just tried to keep them going and they've encouraged them to sort of leave the, the audience in suspense because when when they left the couple's retreat, uh, 
Jake, Jacob left on his own because he slept in a separate room. So he just packed his stuff and left and came back to the house. Haley didn't contact him or he didn't contact Haley until they got back to the same apartment and sort of had this conversation where he was telling her why he, you know, he left without, without saying I'm going. And he left around seven o'clock. I don't think she would have been impressed if he had called at seven o'clock. I think maybe she would have just slipped a note under her door to say I'm going because this is what is happening. Um... Uh, Haley met up with a friend. I don't know who Haley is trying to convince. Is it the audience or is it her friends? Because she was talking about, oh, I've really, you know, we've really been working. I've really poured myself. I've really been open. And week one, week two, week three, Haley wasn't open until Dr. Viviana sat her down and told her that this man is doing all the work and you're not doing anything. That's when she realized that, oh, she's not coming across the way she wants to come across. And then she started vocalizing, oh, I'm making a lot of effort. But you can't see the effort that she's making. And when she was talking to her friend, she's making out, oh, I've made a lot of compromises. I've made a lot of effort. I've done this. And she's very superficial in the fact that she still continues to criticize this man for his clothing. Yes, she's got concerns. 40 is not too old for someone not to have been married. It could be for someone who was working on his career. It could be he was doing things that he doesn't want the public to know about, but he will happily tell her if they had remained married in private what he's been doing for the past 10 years because this is her concern that how can someone live in Atlanta for 10 years and not be married, not do anything productive and just be there. And so I think the, the producers must have told them that you need to at least keep keep the, the, the rules going that you know that you're working on your marriage and this is working and this is what your plan is. And so even when she's talking to a friend, it was if you've watched from from the start, it's frustrating because the things that she's saying and the actions that she's taking don't don't match up. And someone was sort of having a back and forth with me on Twitter about oh why are you supporting Jacob? Uh, why I don't agree with most of the things that he said or done. Some of them have been provoked, but still, I empathize with the fact that this man went into this process wanting to get married and ended up with someone who wasn't ready to get married. And so now he's, in, he's ending up divorced. He's almost 40. He wanted to get married before the age of 40. Sadly, it hasn't worked out. Hopefully, once he's divorced and everything is done, He'll find someone else who wants to marry him. But I, I really feel sorry for them. And I think this is somewhere, something maybe the experts need to look into and actually re-evaluate their matching, you know, when they match couples. Because when you look at the couples this season, you can tell that some of these couples, you can, you can sort of pinpoint who they're similar to in previous, previous seasons who have worked. Haley and Jacob remind me of... Um, Jess and and um, God, I've forgotten her husband's name from not last season but the season before, and so I think it's just a matter of them coming up with a new formula to to, to match their couples, finding ways to make sure that they support the couples as much as possible, and I think. Uh, Anyone signing up for marriage at first sight needs to be open-minded, needs to understand that in the real world, you couldn't find the person, your type of person, whether the way they look, the way they communicate, the way they behave, you couldn't find that person. So you cannot expect the experts to magically find that person for you. They can't find the person that's 100% according to your specifications, but they can try and find someone who's as close to what you want as possible. And so be open-minded, make sure you, you learn as much as you can about your partner before closing off. Otherwise you're going to lose out on a very good partner. And this is what I think is going to happen in Haley and Jacob's case. They could have worked had they been patient with each other. I know Jacob wanted things to move on. I think he had a time frame or he had a plan of how their relationship was going to go. And because he didn't articulate it properly, um, Jessica might have seen might might have seen it as um sorry not Jessica Haley. Haley might have seen it as him being very pushy and very provocative. And so she that could be the reason why she shut down. But I don't know. I don't know. I really hope after this experiment, they're able to find someone who is their person and hopefully get married, settle down, get married and start a family of their own. 
um anyway thanks for watching guys um see you next time next week is decision day so it's going to be crazy i've already seen a, a promo for chris saying he's got feelings for Paige. so oh god you here we go again anyway thanks for watching guys see you next time please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe bye